many, many countries are doing good things to reduce risk to disasters, which is not necessarily the same as reducing risk to climate change, because that is a new type of disasters. But traditionally, many communities have been accustomed to adapt to cyclones, to earthquakes, to volcanic eruptions, uh, forest fires, drought, etc. The issue is that climate change means a new type of disaster because it is more of those old hazards, more intensity, more frequency, but it's also those hazards happening in different places that did not happen before. So it's not the same to adapt to a cyclone in a place like an island in the Caribbean where they have them every year than to adapt now in Brazil or Argentina where they're starting to have them for the first time in their history. I think first of all we have to develop a, a clearer understanding of the impacts of climate change that we're already going to see in terms of more sea level rise, more storms, more drought, uh, more food production problems, diseases spreading uh, to places where, where we don't normally see them. So we need to develop that understanding and then we need to, to put in place measures that are actually going to, to do something about those impacts of climate change that are, that are unavoidable anyway. But we also have to accept in the conservation world, in the world of wildlife and biodiversity, that we're going to be faced with a period, certainly of the rest of this century and perhaps longer than that, where climate change is already the major factor affecting the future of, um, of wildlife and ecosystems. This is not just an environmental debate, it's not just a climate change debate, it's also an issue that's very closely related to, for example, issues of energy security uh, and, uh, and oil prices, which have very much come into the debate. It's become much more of an, of an economic question than an environmental uh, question alone. If some of the worst scenarios that we're seeing painted by the panel and by many other scientific bodies now come true. Um, we could be looking at people literally having to move to other countries. We could, in the worst scenario, be looking at the entire human species having to gravitate north or perhaps south and having to hang on for survival in very diff difficult circumstances. In other words, everything that we've achieved as a human species could be at risk. And then you suddenly realize that that might affect um, your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Make sure that, that anything we, we build or put in place or undertake from here on is climate-proofed in the sense that when we build new buildings, uh, expand cities, we take into account the potential impacts of climate change and make sure that we're prepared um, for impacts that are going to come our way in the future. It is a cultural change, not just an economic change. So it will require time and uh, effort by leaders, both political and economic leaders. But I think that's going to be a great benefit. For example, I'd like to cite Bangladesh, uh, Cuba, Vietnam, because these are three very poor countries. And despite their poverty, they have been able to adapt for many years to hazards, which means that their population is prepared for all types of hazards. They, are n they're, they know them, they are aware, and they are aware also of the vulnerabilities that they have to be careful about for not having a disaster.